congested metropolis has produced a flight from the city, an actual escape, or in an increasingly impersonal environment where flesh and blood are less real than paper and machines, the more insidious flight of man's spirit. Does it matter to us, this loss of vitality, this desertion of the city? Shall we allow the achievements of man's most precious collective expression to vanish? The multitude of social needs that first gave form to cities thousands of years ago have not all vanished. Some have gone, others have changed so that they need no longer take place in the city. And still others, like education, have become stronger. But the traditional form of the city, which serves these needs, is changing. In our time, new forces have appeared that threaten to shatter the historic urban forms and to scatter the contents of the city at random over the landscape. The overfilled urban container has burst. The central core has become demagnetized. All roads still lead to Rome, only to find that our new Romes have become faceless and formless. What we call the urban explosion, the effort to escape from this unfavorable physical and social environment into an unspoiled landscape, results in a dispersal of the city's essential social organs for meeting and mixing. The parts can be brought together on occasion only by an excessive expenditure of time, energy, money, and human vitality. Happily, in the midst of our present urban confusion and disintegration, a new pattern of life has begun, just begun to emerge. Among the elements of this new pattern are the best of the new shopping centers, which are bringing to the city region many of the functions of old city centers. A new and attractive form of the old agora or marketplace is beginning to appear. Industrial operations that once disrupted the metropolitan core have gained in efficiency and better working conditions by decentralizing within the city region. Industrial and commercial parks, designed with respect for the regional setting, often achieve architectural and human results, seldom before associated with industry. In their break away from the city, the best suburbs recognized the human need for natural surroundings. But the urban explosion has left little land for individual homes with spacious private grounds. Such luxuries of space now belong to a favored few. To preserve the regional setting for all requires fresh concepts of community living and a change in our traditional attitudes. The urban explosion and its mere numbers need not frighten us once we have found the human measure. Without overcrowding, good design can create communities with more vitality than ordinary suburbs 
and with natural surroundings. Imaginative architecture also can consign the space-wasting, dangerous automobile to its proper place. In most suburbs, streets, driveways and garages consume at least one-third of the land. Underground garages can free precious land for quiet pedestrian streets on which terraced houses face and for private gardens at the rear of each house. A revival of the idea of London's traditional residential squares creates havens of green. Spaciousness is combined with human scale in pleasing architectural relationships instead of individual chaos. Public transportation must be coordinated with regional growth to link the elements of the new urban pattern. High buildings may free land for recreation, but they aren't really suited to family life. A better solution is a mixture of homes for all stages of life, creating true neighborhoods with variety, balance, measured growth, and purposeful design. Throughout history, the best cities have been mosaics of distinctive neighborhoods, separate villages almost. Now that concept must be enlarged to a regional scale without losing the stable, life-promoting nature of the village. This new regional mosaic must satisfy man's desire for contact with the countryside, which is now fast retreating, just as man has gained the mobility and the leisure time to enjoy it. In more and more regions of the world, the inevitable and urgent choice must be made. Low-grade urban sprawl or a new kind of regional city. The best of the present regional communities, the Stockholm satellites or the English new towns, are attractive and lively but their potential has not been fully realized. They lack the cultural richness and human variety of true cities. Despite their considerable achievements, there is yet no clear role for these cities which will give a meaningful pattern to their activities. No strong purposes like those that brought men together in their first cities. Where can we find such purposes? Like the shopping center, the industrial estate, and the suburb, universities are decentralizing. Perhaps they can assure a strong pattern of regional growth and renewal. The university and the school representing education, the one function open to all members of the community, could play the part that religion and the kingship did when the first cities came into being, and so form the focus of the new city that is beginning to appear. Such magnetic centers could give to the emerging new mosaic of communities the means they need for their steady, purposeful development. The restoration of a balanced relationship between man and nature 
is an important condition for the rebirth of our city regions. This will be but one aim of an education that embraces the entire horizon of the whole man. To give purpose to our new and superior conditions of life, so that man's cities and man himself will flourish. Our scattered suburban elements now await an implosion which will bring the parts together in a new urban pattern. Once this new idea takes hold, the scattered particles will draw together in a complex, many-sided, coherent center. True cities. Our existing cities likewise clamor for renewal, based on a more dynamic regional concept which will relieve them of the time-wasting, congestion-producing functions they now clumsily perform, and which will re-establish their chief function as a theater for the changing human drama and as a repository and transmitter of the cultural heritage. The heart of the traditional city, with all the beauty and character that comes only with age, will not disappear. In the city to come, the old currents will flow in two directions, feeding the new, as well as drawing on its resources. Freed at last from the unnecessary tissue that burdens it, the mother city may renew its role as the magnet among magnets performing those functions that large numbers of people alone make possible. The heart of this city should be exactly that, both as the center of man's most creative emotions and also in the sense of sending out to all the member communities of the whole region the substances, spiritual as well as material, that will invigorate and sustain them. As the regional communities need some of the compactness and social complexity of the city, so the city needs some of the spaciousness of the regional communities. Public good must always take precedence over private interests in this opening up and renewal of the city's heart to ensure the vital meeting and mixture, which is the prime purpose of the city. The life of our cities will respond to a faith in life. If we build primarily to satisfy the deepest needs of man, all the elements will fall into their proper place. Not least important, we must rebuild our cities with respect for the important physical reminders of the past. These legacies are not to be thoughtlessly discarded to make way for the new, for they are part of man's collective urban memory. is a mirror of the larger world where man sees his own image, the image of what he was, what he is, and what he might become. Men have loved cities, loved them for their beauty and power, for their variety and animation, loved them for their own sakes as one loves old friends, despite their many historic shortcomings. What makes the city almost a living personality an image people smile at in their dreams, or even remember in their prayers. Next year, in Jerusalem, or Athens, or Rome, or Mecca, or Benares. Cities 
are not simply enlarged villages. The purposes are different. The social form is complex. Their life is dynamic and more delicately balanced. The city is more far-reaching and universal than the indrawn and inbred village. Essentially, the city is a theater for the human drama in which each citizen has a part to play and lines to say. The drama takes place against a specially designed background with a sufficiently large cast of characters to represent the variety of human interests, activities, and purposes. This mixture, this cosmopolitanism, is the chief source of the city's vitality. And we must enlarge and enrich it as we move towards a new urban form. The universality of the city at its best, where the individual usually is accepted as an individual, quickens the senses of the city dweller, whether old inhabitant or a newcomer. City life does favor specialization and division of labor, but this is by no means always negative. Only the city offers so rich a store of resources and so wide a range of discriminating and stimulating minds. In the city, there has always been a choice. Each man may work out in the theater of the city some part of the historic plot. Each generation may design some of the scenery. Take away the dramatic occasions of city life and half its essential activities would vanish and more than half its meanings and values would be diminished. The confrontation of man with man and even struggle and tension are the very essence of urban life. But the city also is capable of reuniting man in common rituals and public ceremonies. But the city is more than a place for the human drama, a bright spectacle. The city brings together all man's accumulated knowledge and experience in institutions which only a city can support, and among people only a city can attract. Now let me see whether you can find which, which, uh, how many white ones will go into this? Say it. Seven. Seven. Into this. Three. Huile. 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 Ah, vous allez la voir. The city multiplies man's powers to think, to remember, to educate, to communicate and so to make possible associations which bridge or bypass nations, cultures, beliefs, and theories. The city preserves, enlarges, and passes on man's cultural heritage. And it is all these rich qualities that the city to come 
must absorb and extend and guard. to start a nuclear war will not be a decision taken by a communist child or a communist mother or an American child, an American mother. It will be a decision taken few, by a few power megalomaniacs. And it is you and I who will suffer. And it is you who in your apathy, so much passive human clay in the hands of a psychopathic party. What is the official doctrine of the state in which we live? <laughs> we're still, we're still, I know, I know. We'll hear Miss Hyde. Hang on. Generally, sir. We'll mean. hear Miss Hyde. Well, sir, um, I would, uh, from what I can see, we are indoctrinated. Well, someone defend me. Debout! Aye, aye, aye. La cause va de la reine maintenant ouverte. Que ceux qui ont affaire à cette course s'approchent et ils seront entendus. Dieu sauve la reine. The city, as it first appeared in history, was symbolically a world. But now the world must become, in a certain sense, a city, if it is to survive and flourish. The smallest unit must exemplify, even in the neighborhood, the many-sided life of the larger world, where nations and cultures now meet, no longer self-contained, self-sufficient jealous of the outsider, but reaching out to demand their share of a more universal life, and in turn expressing some of the reality of that life, giving it the illumination of consciousness, the stamp of purpose, the color of love. The unspoken dialogue between lovers, which makes all other forms and expressions of life possible, 
must be carried into the very structure of the city. And this loving human encounter is what the city exists to promote and sustain. Curtain rises on a new urban drama and a new urban stage. The city of man. The city where man will at last be at home with himself. On a smaller planet, but in a wider world. 